Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The intonation and the pitch in English are... That's automatic for me, but sometimes I pay attention to it and I'm like, that's kind of weird. And if you mess with it, it gets very confusing. You all tuned in to watch me eat, right? So, sorry, simplicity. <clears throat> um, I was I finished recently finished reading uh, Musashi, which is a story of uh, Musashi. It's a dramatized tale of real events and real people of and the life of uh, Miyamoto Musa. Musashi, Musashi in the 16th century and his pursuit of uh, the way in in all caps the way and uh, I am reading I haven't picked that up in a bit I probably should change that uh, The Five Rings and it's about mastery of self and mastery of your the execution of your activities and even in your your just daily life and after finishing it they talk you know uh, you know it's somewhat abstract but they talk about the way and what the way means and uh, I was trying to think of it in a, a simple in a you know, I was trying to reduce it a little bit and I think what it is is uh, striving in simplicity because he talks about uh, the way being used not only in swordsmanship and as uh, for warriors in battle, but also for the governing of people. And how does how does the way of self-control um, play into that, or what what is the way in the management or the the government of people? And the the answer that came to my mind was just simplicity was understanding the reality and striving for the simplest terms possible which also agree with that reality and I guess somewhere between your goals and reality is is the simplicity the, the simple answer because the simplicity requires less of everyone <clears throat> People don't have to be as upset. Taxes are kind of lower. Uh, everything is... You know, people People are more uh, at rest or at ease uh, because things are... Things are designed around keeping things simple. They're designed around uh, uh, reduction in motion. Uh, they're designed around reduction in effort for people to uh, adhere to rules or different guidelines. So it's, it's just an, an effort of simplicity. And I was thinking about that for a bit. And what is, what is simplicity in, in my effort, in my work, uh, in, in software design, in, in hardware design, in input device design? And it's always that same thing. And maybe simplicity isn't the right answer, but maybe it's my answer. <laughs> but it's always striving towards simplicity, reducing motion, reducing actions but what struck me a little bit was that this this uh, you know Mike Mike is not a simple thing I mean it's, it would have been simpler to just make something um, in software and just let it do macros and build macros that way and it's that would be simpler for me but I don't think it would be simpler for others. It doesn't make it as accessible. So what I'm doing is not striving in simplicity uh, at my level of simplicity, but striving at simplicity to simplify the lives of others and simplify their, their workflow, their experience of, the, of their job or whatever, whatever thing on the computer that they have to interface with.
So you can ask yourself, what is the, how is more simplicity achieved, or is, is what I'm doing contributing to simplicity? Because there is kind of a, I don't know, I, might, I'm, I feel like I use meta too much. This is like a meta simplicity, where you use complexity to create simplicity. You know, a, a CPU and tons of logic uh, is not simple. It, it's very complex. Well, so you might be able to make arguments either way on that, but it still requires a lot of effort to create. But once it's created, uh, assuming it doesn't require any additional uh, maintenance or much maintenance, you are creating simplicity. You have created simplicity. <clears throat> if you write your code badly, then you've created complexity in order to introduce simplicity to a process. However, in doing so, uh, by coding badly, you've made something that requires maintenance, requires upkeep, uh, requires you having to dive back into it and figure out how to add features because you planned poorly, because you, you, you built your architecture poorly. And so the question becomes, uh, how, much, how much simplicity are you really creating? And in programming design, or software design, it comes back to, um, in my mind always, you know, <laughs> I'm going to hit the big button. <laughs> Troy's talking about software design, surface area. <laughs> it's all about surface area. The surface area is what, you're, what you actually have to interface with, what you have to interact with. And functional programming is what limits that surface area. And you can, again, you can functionally program in just about any language. The point is to reduce the mutability of your code because then that reduces the amount of code that you actually have to look at, uh, the surface area that you actually have to debug. So a, a sphere can be very large and has a lot of volume in it, but the surface of the sphere, if stretched out on a flat plane, is comparatively very small, although we are talking 2D and 3D, but you get my meaning. Um, building something in a more or less a procedural fashion allows you to, uh, procedural fashion with a lot of functional programming means that you don't have to look at those functions. You're just taking data and you're mutating it here and you're handing it back there and mutating it there. And if you have problems, you can identify where those are by looking at your, your list of mutations and the logic that's being applied to decide which of those mutations is taking place. So, is your code introducing complexity? Is your code creating complexity and uh, uh, hiding itself as simplicity? You know, the, the idea of being able to reduce your actions is, is a big focus of mine because you're taking something that's uh, five steps. You know, I'm still, I'm still working on uh, our cutter machine and I've used Mike Mike to, to help me complete those cuts uh, to interface with the machine because you have to click multiple times at, on the machine while you're adjusting the cutter. So you set up on the cutter, you insert the, insert the paper, you hit go, and it scans the paper. And while it's scanning the paper for, you know, a dozen seconds, you go over to the computer, which is three steps away, and you press get ready, basically. And then it, it takes a little bit, and that time is taken up by the scanner finishing or it finishing scanning the paper and then it says now align the head and once it's finished you can push the buttons and align the head and once you align the head you're ready to hit go for real on the computer so once you align the head three more steps back to the computer and then you hit go and then you look at the cutter and make sure that you got good alignment and make sure that you make uh, at least two of the contact or two of the uh, alignment points and then then you can walk away so all of that computer interaction, which is you know, three steps, <laughs> six steps, or, uh, or 12 steps there and back uh, two times, I put mic mic on that and made a, a, a six foot long USB extension cable and ran it from there all the way over to the machine. Okay, pretty sure I, I was about to run over a chipmunk there. He just darted right in front of my tires. I, I guess he stopped a little bit before. That's all right. <laughs> Nuts to chipmunks, though. Those guys are not fun. So my process there took basically all the clicks that I had 
and turn them into pushing the macro button. So I could stand at the cutter with Mike Mike on top of the macro, or on top of the cutter, do my interface, hit go, and stand there, and wait for it to finish, and then align the head and hit go. And something as simple as that <clears throat> greatly improved, well, I want to say it greatly improved the time, but it only, it greatly improved my perception of how things were going. Because it's, I mean, it's literally seconds, but it's also me shifting my weight and stepping. Um, a little over a hundred times a day. You know, I'm stepping back and forth. Uh, at most, a hundred times, or over a hundred, hundred and twelve times a day. And it's like, why is this? breaking down the motion to <clears throat> breaking down the motion from uh, I push the buttons on the <laughs> I push the buttons on the <laughs> the cutter and then I push the buttons on the computer yeah very simple well you're not really just pushing the buttons the buttons aren't right next to each other you're you're walking over there and you're looking at the computer and you're reaching forward because the mouse is on the elevated level for some reason and you're reaching forward and you're craning your neck up to look at the monitor and you're clicking on the thing and then you go back and you step back. And all of that is wasted motion. All of it is unnecessary. And frankly, all of it is fatiguing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it doesn't, you know, I would probably benefit from one of those workplace mats there because it, it just adds up. All of it adds up. But now with Mike Mike, I don't have to walk over there. I can just stand there and kick off those button clicks at the appropriate time. Now, I'd really like to get it to interface directly into the uh, the cutter controls so that I can align the head and press enter so that all I do is put in the paper and hit go and then it uh, scans the page. I can't tell if something just dropped out of this. <laughs> scans the page and then waits and then aligns the head and then presses go on the computer all by itself. Then <laughs> that's just one motion. Uh -huh. It's, the, it's just striving for simplicity and understanding the, the little the little complexities, the, the little things that add up. No, I've talked about that before. <clears throat> I don't know how useful this one was. 